The live stream will be prepared. 10%, 20%, 45%, and suddenly it's 100%. There we go. I think we are live now. And I need to prepare my uh, setup so I'm ready to take any questions in the chat. But first of all, welcome everybody. I'm very glad to be a guest at Conline today. I hope you can see me properly and um, hear me properly. I don't know how long this talk ex exactly will go. I plan for 15 minutes. 15 minutes means that you have 10 minutes to the next full hour, whatever you do then next, which often starts at the full hour. You have a little break in there and there we are already at one of the lessons of online play, plan in breaks and obviously as I don't plan to run for a long time. I don't have to have a break within my talk, but I should respect that people might need a break before whatever they need to do, they need to do in between the sessions. There we go. So welcome everybody. This is um, something I have done already once in German, but this is the first time I'm presenting this in English. So I'm very happy to have this opportunity. Thank you very much, Conline organizers. Uh, you're great. And uh, I see in your list of uh, schedules and uh, games and presentations you run that um, I'm just uh, like a one tiny small uh, stone in a, in a huge brick wall among amazing things. So here, you don't need to see me that large the whole time. I can move into this corner here in this discussion today, we want to talk about actual plays of larks. So as you can see in the title, I forgot to translate that, but I promise you I trans translated the rest of it. However, it is full of English abbreviations anyway, so it wouldn't hurt that much. So actual plays of larks, or in German, von larks, is what this is about. Um, we will discuss what lark stands for, what actual play stands for, just in short, lark stands for live action online games, or very, put it very, very simply, online labs. Yeah, that is the topic of today. But first of all, I wanted to share a couple of words uh, about me and then um, we go through this presentation. So what are logs, actual plays? Why do we do actual plays? Finally, how actual plays can design, uh, influence design and finally actual plays and safety, which is also a very important topic, I think. But first of all, a couple of words about me. Um, on the left, you see the logo from my homepage. This is allesistzahl.de, that is German and a little bit complicated. But when you Google my name, you will also find my homepage and all kinds of other resources. I'm 41. I live in Bonn in Germany. In 2018, I wrote the LARP Manifesto, which can be found on the Nordic uh, LARP uh, homepage, but also on my private homepage. I have a YouTube channel called Beta Funktion. Uh, where I put all my recorded game sessions, tabletop RPG and uh, live action online games on. And I feel personally a lot uh, connected to the American free from scene or live action game scene, however you want to put that. Um, I am a member of the Gauntlet community. Uh, that is uh, a community to play online together. And yeah, I can also warmly welcome you to the Gauntlet. If anybody wants to join that, let me know. And we can figure that out how to do that. So, so far about me. Um, now let's come to a little bit of a definition. What is a LARC? So live action online game, it is. That's what I already said. And well, let's dissect that. It con there is a live action in there. That means it's about the full body and mind, in my opinion. That is what live action stands for, in my opinion. There's online in there, that means it is at home online. It is not transferred to an online space, but it is made for an online space. And finally, it's a game. A game is a game. That's a pretty self-sufficient definition, I think. Game is uh, old as humankind and an activity not only for kids, but for any age and something many people enjoy in different aspects. I like the word game a lot. Also, interestingly, when you do tabletop RPG, then the G at the end stands for game as well. So joining live action from LARP 
and game from role playing and just skipping the role playing in the middle because I think that's already included in game and live action from my point of view. We get to a live action online game because obviously the online combines these two worlds in this case. I also have a little logo. Um, if you want that, you can use that uh, for your own games and put it on them just as a sticker. Up to you. So, what can Laox do? Um, I bring a couple of examples to you and tell you a couple of things about them so you get an idea about what kind of games we're talking about. So this one, for example, it's called Outscored. That's um, a log I designed uh, for the Golden Cobra in 2019. The Golden Cobra is a competition for live action games and uh, it won one of the uh, Golden Cobras, nicely enough. The Outscored is the idea of um, that there's a dystopian future and they are friends which want to go to university and they need a high score, a social score that is. So this is a dystopian society in which every individual has a score and when you want to do something, they will check your score and if it is too low, you might get rejected. So aim for a good score, you get a good score for good social behavior. And in this game, um, you need a proper social score to make it to this university course. Um, so people play this group of friends together and we discuss uh, what we can do to make it to the university. And there's one thing, if you get a like, like on Facebook, and your social score goes up. Unfortunately, nobody has infinite number of likes, but just two or three of them. So maybe one could like put them all together and give them to one of those and friends, and then that person can make it to university. But then the others are worse off. And in that game, interestingly, what I do there is that I use the light of your screen. So imagine you're sitting in the dark, you put all other lights off. You're just sitting there and have your face illuminated by the light from your screen. If that light is green, your face appears a little bit green, as you can see in the picture here for some of those people. If the screen is purple, then your face will be illuminated in purple. And if it goes pitch black, then you might disappear like this one little guy there in the corner, <laughs> that is me. And for this game, I designed a Google spreadsheet in which changes color depending on where you currently socially stand. And with little check boxes, you can send likes to your friends because everybody's sitting on a different part of the spreadsheet. And so you can send likes and then the color of, the, of their face suddenly changes. So I'm honestly quite proud of this design because it is breaking with like one of the assumptions you have from online game that is everybody is in their own room and nobody can affect the, other, the space of the other person. But in this case, you can. Let's have a look at another game. This is uh, Makeup Moments. Um, this is a game about celebrating makeup together and putting makeup on. And it refers to this intimate moment of putting makeup on when you transform from your the day creature to your night creature, possibly. The camera serves as a mirror here. So the camera is suddenly not a mirror, uh, like a camera only, where others can look uh, at you, but also you can look at yourself. So when I get closer and start putting some um, kayal on or mascara, others can observe me as if they are standing behind the mirror. And in this game, this is used to create intimacy and makeup is seen as a tool of positive empowerment. And obviously this is not the case for everybody, um, but in this game and just for the safe environment this game creates, it is the case. So this is for enthusiastic and encouragement. And um, after this one hour of putting makeup on together, everybody does a selfie and you can see one of my selfies from one of those games in the corner. Um, and then we use the time and talk about what, how it felt like, how it was different to what makeup usually stands for in our life. And for some, makeup is a tool of oppression. And for others, makeup is a tool of empowerment. For others, makeup is a taboo. I really like this game, especially for this after game talk, but also because it really, really makes a lot of fun. And finally, I bring to you last words, another game of mine which is 
for three players. And there, an unfortunate death separates two people who still have unresolved business. And the living is visiting the person who died uh, at uh, the graveyard. And the, the person who died, the deceased, is still there as a ghost. But the ghost can't talk, obviously, to the living. So the living is standing there at the grave and talking. And the ghost is responding, but the living is not. It. And that is re represented very easily in a video call by just putting your sound volume to zero if you are the living. You can't hear what the other person is saying anymore. You also can't see them anymore. You just look at a picture. But the other person, the ghost, can see you and has a message still to send to you. Fortunately, there's an angel, the third player at the grave, which can't hear the living because of an asymmetric ups setup of the communication channels. But the angel can send on a Google drawing, this is like an image board, can send images like in a dream to the living. And that way, a communication triangle is created, quite intimate, again, and possibly but not, not that lighthearted, the, the topic of the game. But uh, hopefully it leads in many of those situations that the living and the dead can resolve the issue they still had with each other. More about this uh, in a later part of this talk. So the other topic, what are actual plays? An actual play is if you record a game you play online. That can happen as a live stream or as a recording. You can cut or you just put it unedited online. There are professional actual plays and they are just people like a lot of people on the gauntlet which record the games and just put them online. You can find actual plays as podcasts cut into 30 minute slices. You find live streams on Twitch with audience participation even and many actual plays you find on YouTube from very authentic, simple play to massive uh, million dollar productions. Why do people make actual plays? Well, those who make that for entertainment, I think that is obvious. You, they want to produce a professional product and make a business out of it. They do this to entertain an audience, yes. That's fair, that's fine. Um, but there are other reasons as well why people do actual plays. And one, for example, is, and I think I should move myself, make myself a little bit smaller. Another reason can be to show how to play, especially for tabletop RPGs, this is very popular, that you say, well, our play culture is invisible to others. And there are many people who don't know how we, how we play, what a tabletop RPG looks like. And with producing actual plays, you're contributing to promoting a play style, a play culture you, for example, think is worth being promoted. For example, in the gauntlet, it's always very important for us to promote safety tools in games and to make gaming a more safe space and therefore, we also put like part of our safety uh, tools and dis safety discussions in the actual play. Not all of them because some of them should stay private and should not be recorded, but then at least we mention that we also do them, but have them done so before starting the recording. But also maybe you just want to provide insights to the designer of the game or to show a new game and how you imagined it could be run. So that is interesting and is something the RPG scene or also the live action online game scene is doing for each other. But then there's also a simple reason for making actual plays that is community. That is the idea of sharing joy, getting into an exchange. Um, I let others watch me playing and I'm allowed to see how they play and I enjoy that. It's a lot of fun. I can feel close to people which I haven't seen for a long time by watching them playing. I, uh, I know that I enjoyed this and I can refer others to this moment which I enjoyed. 
sharing joy is a good human tradition, I would say, and we should not play that down as an important part of why people do actual plays. And finally, there's also posterity. Um, you might consider what you do as actual play as a piece of art. You might think that in 20 years from now, nobody will know anymore how we played. Uh, and thanks to actual plays, this will not be the case. People will be able to watch and see what has been done at the table, how many times the dice were picked, uh, if miniatures were used, for example, um, how the conversation at the table between GM and players worked, but also how these things like live action online games worked at the beginning of the 20s, uh, of the 21st century. Finally, also personal memories. I also like to see my recordings <laughs> from the past and see like with whom I was hanging out and how my play style has changed. Uh, that is also an important part, at least for me. Yeah. However, there are concerns and they should be taken seriously. One is especially important also for lovers who sometimes uh, call it, talk about something called the magic circle. The magic circle means that who was there was there. And same goes for tabletop RPG, obviously. So we are inviting an anonymous audience into our game. Our table is not just our table anymore. We have to constantly think about like that we might be watched or will be watched. Is that changing our play style? Does it destroy intimacy? Everybody has to answer that question for themselves. Um, maybe we also don't like how others suddenly turn more performative, are too shy to say something stupid, for example, or that they um, exaggerate suddenly how they play. And in the end, aren't we together to play a game? Are we possibly suddenly together to do a recording? Is that the purpose of the evening? And it's not fun if like the recording broke, for example. These are important concerns and questions. And for myself, I have answered them that I am okay. Uh, I, my feeling is that my play style is not turning performative, but I forget pretty quickly about the camera. Not forgetting in the sense of not, uh, not knowing anymore that I'm recorded, but in the sense of, that I don't care, that it really doesn't make a difference. Obviously, I also have it easy because I'm not on Twitch with 10,000 people watching me and whatever I do can turn into a scandal or whatever, but uh, maybe 20 people watch the video in the end at best. So maybe it's also easy for me to say that it's that I can easily forget about the game, but that should be the case for most of us, right? It's a niche in a niche in a niche. Also about the magic circle, that is not my experience, but that can be different for. Also, the people are the most important part of the game. The game is more important than the recording and that is the hierarchy which always should be followed. So if somebody is not okay with recording, I turn it off the recording. If I feel like that the game is suffering from ambitions of doing the recording, then I will switch off the recording and so on. So in the end, the game should in, indeed be in the center. So now we combine this actual play and log. Can we do actual plays of logs, which is like, can we log together? Huh. Is that working? Well, yes, it is because you already saw a couple of examples, but we need to discuss technology for that first. So actual plays have been done for many years on software like Google Hangouts. Since that is not available anymore, not in the form you needed it, the Google Hangouts Classic. Um, and uh, instead, like many people switch to Zoom or StreamYard or other services. Zoom is nice as it allows you to directly stream to YouTube. It allows you publicly or privately it is nice because of the stability of the software and a couple of other functionalities. However, other services are nearly ex exactly as good and have other advantages again. What you need to record your game is either you record to the cloud, for example, your YouTube account, or you 
record privately uh, to your local hard drive. Um, streaming directly, I already mentioned, and there it is important to decide if you want to go public, unlisted or private. I talk about safety around these issues a little bit later. And then there's also free software like OBS, which helps you to do stuff like lower thirds, which is like having your name on the bottom um, or does wonderful overlays and Twitch streamers often use OBS to organize videos in a very specific manner. I admire that a lot, but uh, that's not my style. Uh, maybe too much of an effort and then possibly the game is second. Execution is the other thing. So when you want to run a log, I, I have a, a structure similar to the one here uh, as bullet points listed. You will have to have a pregame discussion and CATS stands for content, aim, tone, and subject matter. So these are four important elements which should be clarified before the game starts. You would then practice safety techniques. Then you start the recording or you start the recording first if you want to promote also safety techniques and feel comfortable with, together with all the players if on putting this down online. Then you do a welcome, play the game. If it's a long game, you should incorporate breaks, like at least every 90 minutes, I think is a good practice to have a five to 10 minutes break. And then afterwards you do a debrief. That means you talk about the game, what has happened and slowly release the characters and return to the real world, so to say. That can also be done on camera. However, it is often an intimate moment. Many people prefer not doing this on camera, the debrief, or split it in two parts, doing a debrief on camera and then moving for a second debrief offline. So there's still a space to also discuss without having an audience. So my approach for actual plays is that I don't run a game for entertainment. This is, I don't run my games to entertain an audience, but instead I run it for the players present. However, that's the second bullet point. I sometimes design games which are specifically interesting to be watched. So in that sense, I design for an audience, but I don't play for the audience. When I play, I want not to be interfered with audience needs. This is also why I'm often skeptical about approaches which say, let us integrate the audience, but that doesn't mean it doesn't work. I just read yesterday about a wonderful example where it seemed to work well, but I prefer having the design doing that work. And that is before the game, that is a more abstract, more intellectual kind of work. And then having the design interesting and entertaining for an audience in itself, intrinsically and not organized by the players in the game. My collection of actual plays can be found on my YouTube channel. That is, as I said, beta function. I have about 30 recordings of live action modeling games and also about like 100 tabletop RPG actual plays. Most of them are in English. However, some of them are also in German. I usually put that into the name. So if there is not, nothing like German in brackets on front, then it should be in English. So no worries about like clicking through a bunch of videos and listening to early German the whole time. That should be the case. Let's have a look at some examples. Now let's return to something practical again. And I want to talk each time for each game about the context of the recording, the specificities of the recording and the design concept regarding the recording. So since this is a presentation about actual plays, these are the things I want to focus on, although I have a lot of other things also to say about the games. So the first one is the bed cave. And let me turn here, maybe in the corner or here. The bed cave is another Golden Cobra winner, by the way, uh, from 2020, honorable mention at least. And that game you, in that game, you play a family of bats. And those bats, they are in their cave and they hang upside down. And 
nicely in Zoom, there is a function where you can easily turn your camera 180 degrees. And then you are already upside down. And if everybody does so, it gives a nice little picture like the one you see there on the, on the screenshot. Um, the recording I have from the bed cave, there I do a lot of things on camera. So this is a good example if you want to see something from the beginning to the end. This is a game I ran for uh, an American LARP convention called LARP Shack. And I did the, the welcome to the audience. We practiced together with the audience, the upside down as a new perspective. We did breaks and uh, we also did the character creation on the recording. So if you're interested in like how for such games character creation is done in a collaborative manner, this is also the recording to watch. And so for the bed cave, I think it's a quite entertaining um, actual play because of this upside down and also because the game works a lot with movements that you move like a bed. And maybe you have like a towel around your neck and then even can pretend to have wings or go even further with some costuming, but not necessary. So this game is entertaining for the players, but I think also for the audience, it is very short. It's about one hour actual playtime. So the time in which you are actually a bet, so to say. And then there's one part where in this game where you Google a new home for these bets. And there you switch off your bet, your cameras for a while and for just five to 10 minutes, you Google on the internet to find a new cave. And then you return as bets and need to explain what you found as a bet. That is not that easy because bets have a very different understanding of what they have seen. And in the end, the bats have to make a decision to which cave to go. So if I had a live audience, for example, I would post the links into a chat or into a comment window. So the audience could watch this and know what we are talking about. They could also just move ahead and go to the debrief where we all reveal what we have picked and then return and listen to that again. That's the beauty of a recording, right? You can move back and forth. So this is a game I can also recommend to play for new people. And I think the setup is relatively easy as long as everybody has a desktop version of Zoom installed and it makes for a great um, actual play. The only problem is that the artificial intelligence to identify what the virtual background is and what you are, is looking for a torso like this. If you turn yourself upside down, it can't identify you properly anymore. And then it makes more sense to switch the um, virtual background off if you don't have a proper green screen setup. That's a little bit of pity. So let's have a look at another game. This one is the last words again. I already explained how this works, but now you see a little bit more screenshots and also how the setup actually works. So this was designed for audience first. The game got published in the Gauntlet Codex, fanzine, melancholy. Um, the setup is a little bit complicated, but in the end, it has been run 15 times or so already completely independent from me, so it can't be that complicated or I have to congratulate everybody who made it. Um, however, if you want to do it as an actual play, there comes an extra layer of complication in there. Um, but also actually not that much. It's more about like, you need to select the right camera view if you want to highly entertain the audience. So here on the left, you can see one of our image boards. And obviously it's very nice for the audience to see how that fills and what image they try to transmit. And since the audience can listen to what the living is saying, they can listen to what the deceased is saying, and they can see what the angel is doing on the drawing at the meantime, they get this full picture. And this is why I call this audience first. The angel is doing the drawing and the setup works like this, that the, so that the angel can't hear the living, although the deceased can hear the living, you need to have the video call, but also you need to have a phone call or a separate voice call somehow between the deceased and the angel. 
And that's how the magic works. So you need this second device, but usually this is not such an issue, right? Nowadays, everybody has a phone which can do voice calls or something similar. Endgame is another log I think is very interesting for actual plays because this is a game which plays in two video rooms. This was originally a face-to-face -face lab and in that face-to-face -face lab, there were two dedicated areas. And how to represent that online? Well, nowadays, everybody immediately thinks of Discord rooms and exactly, that's totally fine. While I was design designing that, Discord hadn't had video call yet. And so I had, I had to do a little bit of complicated setup of two people using their Google Hangouts accounts, which at that time were able to record directly to YouTube. And then we shared the link to these two video calls and then people could click that link to move from one call to the other. This game is again, just 60 minutes actual playtime. Again, very short, also audience friendly that they don't have to watch for hours and hours. So in 60 minutes, you have the whole story and there's a time uh, measure in there that every 10 minutes, people are reshuffled who is in which room. There's a list that you see in which room you have to be at which time. So after 10 minutes, you move over there. 10 minutes make for quite a sweet amount of time to do scenes in a certain group. And then this group dynamic is changing because other people are joining and leaving. So what is this game about in Endgame? It's a group of um, eSport professionals who just lost their, most, their final match of the season and are uh, relocated to the amateur league. They can't stay in the professional league anymore. Their contracts are canceled. It's over, it's out. One of them maybe has an offer to be picked up by a more professional team, but they were thinking of themselves of like close family and always sticking together. So are they really leaving? Another person thinking about leaving the gaming business, the esport business altogether. Others really want to make it and climb their way up the amateur league again. And But they also have the financial resources to do so. So it's a little bit of a drama, but as you can see, also a quite fun kind of drama. So when you as an audience want to watch this, you have two recordings, each 60 minutes long, and you can watch them in parallel. You can watch them 10 minutes here, then you pick up what happened in the other room for 10 minutes, and then you watch again 10 minutes here and watch 10 minutes there. Um, so, there are many different ways how you could watch this. Watching this live, as we did for the first recording, might be even more fun. So you can trace your favorite player, for example, from room to room. Or you think like, oh, this story starts to becoming interesting. I stay here and see what else is happening later. <clears throat> Give it a try. I have two or three recordings of Endgame on my channel. Um, you might enjoy it. Then I already talked about makeup moments and makeup moments also makes for great uh, actual play, be not especially because you can learn about making good makeup because you can't. <laughs> the camera as a mirror is, is fun in the game, but it's not a very good mirror. <laughs> so you can only do like simple makeup, I would say. But what is happening in the game when you watch this, this, you can look behind the mirror. You are with those people in this intimate moment. It's like peeking through the door. Well, but you are officially invited to do so because they recorded this and put it online and they all consented to put this online. Also, people are not stuck at their computer. They are in this game are invited to get up and walk around. If they are in the game with their mobile phone, you might also participate in them walking elsewhere and looking at a real mirror, for example, to do something like granular, some, something really fine. It is quite a lovely, a lively setup. And that's what I like about the game. Well, it also, if you go fast forward, it is also amazing what people can do and uh, what inspires them 
like the setup of the game is that you use randomization to decide um, what kind of setup you have and maybe you are going on a heist, maybe you're going to um, a nightclub, maybe you go to the Oscar presentation, anything goes and the makeup can obviously then be very different. Then we also have the election of the wine queen. That is entertaining for other reasons. This is a scene and act structure. And that means that the log resembles more of what some people would already consider tabletop RPG. Uh, you play fully in character in the scenes and you play one scene after another, but only about five scenes or so. And then you take a 15 minutes break where people discuss out of character what they want to see next. And again, we use a Google spreadsheet and these 15 minutes are used to say, I think I want to have a scene with your character where we are in this situation. And the other person says, yeah, and I go with your character and your character and we are sitting in a taxi on our way home. So you design these scenes together and as an audience, you can participate and you can see how they also step out of character and reflect on what has happened. And that is quite strong. What is also quite strong is that in this game, you are allowed or even encouraged, but not forced to drink wine. Not that much that you're not a good player anymore, and but you can become tipsy in the end. So it can be quite frivolous. It's about the election of the wine queen, which is a German tradition in German wine regions to elect one young member of the community to represent the wine industry of that town. It is a tradition in decay because there are many people are moving away from the small towns and it is also associated with too much alcohol, um, I don't want to say incest, but like, you know, like small village stuff, which is probably not completely fair to everybody in these regions, but the game is also an opportunity to reflect on this. This is not making fun of people uh, following this tradition. This is also not about like uh, putting this on a, on, a, on a throne, but this is, an honest analysis in a playful manner, I would say. Also a lot of fun, this game has a scene ending mechanic. That means a scene is over when somebody on their phone, which everybody has like prepared for that, has a drinking song from the Oktoberfest, Ein Prosit. And when anybody starts playing that, they don't have to be in the scene. The scene is immediately over and everybody has to start singing that song together, which never works because online you have this micro asynchronicity, so you can't properly sing together, but that is also the case at Oktoberfest. So it doesn't really matter that much. And you drink together and you sing together and it all becomes super turbulent and causes a friction, which I admire in this game. The friction comes from very dire scenes personal conflicts, and then suddenly everybody has to pretend being happy and sing, just like in reality. Um, there's one game which is uh, now not by me, that is called Insta Yoga the Game by Sean Roski. You can find it on itch.io. And that is an amazing game because it is pervasive. You can see me doing yoga there in the corner. And um, these are pictures I took from a gameplay in Guatemala between three volcanoes at a beautiful a lake. Um, and in this game, you pretend to be Instagram yoga stars. And again, this is not about making fun, but it's about like putting yourself into sho in the shoes of another person. And in this game, you do yoga together, but then you upload the picture to Instagram 
into a possibly account just created for that game. And then everybody has to make positive and encouraging and highly philosophical comments under each other's picture. Isn't that your destiny? Just wonderful, lovely in the sunset. You are like crystal, so clear and pure. So this is Insta Yoga the game, and I think it's a wonderful media criticism as a design, but also is a lot of fun. And you do yoga, it all comes together. Another game, not by me, but by Banana Chen is called They Are Onto Me, uh, which can be found in an ontology of whose name I can't remember anymore, but it is also a Golden Cobra winner before it was published. So the raw version you can get for free on, on the Golden Cobra website. And this game, They Are Onto Me, is a solo game on which you upload little video snippets every day on YouTube or Instagram or whatever medium you prefer, in which you slowly uncover an alien conspiracy infiltrating highest ranks of society. Uh, so you put this up and create your own little conspiracy theory by discovering something in the bin at your work or you are walking home a different way and because you know they are behind you and, and stuff like that. So it's really like a live show of the game. It's, uh, it's an interesting design. Again, it plays with a contemporary medium. Um, I can highly recommend that. And in terms of actual play, it also creates something absolutely worth watching, especially if you follow this live. That means you get like new input every day and just a little bit of it. So I like it a lot. This is Toby Abad, a super cool game designer and player from the Philippines. And, uh, he has his um, actual play of this game on his uh, YouTube channel. I can highly recommend to watch that. Oh, well, we've talked enough about games. Now it's talk time to talk about safety and some do's and don'ts about uh, actual plays and logs. One thing, as I already mentioned, people are always more important than an actual play. Maybe they're also important, but they're also more important. Um, that means if it doesn't work anymore for anybody, for, some, for one player, then you stop the actual play no matter what the audience is. The actual play always has to stand second row compared to people, very importantly. Then there are safety requirements, specifically important, I think, for live action online game actual plays. And one is that um, in opposite to tabletop RPG, where you can often just take a third person perspective, if it, something becomes too emotional, you stop playing that out, but you just say, my character is breaking into tears instead of breaking into tears. In live action games, this is usually not the case. So you can reach other emotional highs and lows and that should be recognized and being taken care for. Also, you play in your private space. So while, while in LARPs, you usually go to a location and you just bring yourself with, which brings other safety concerns with it, obviously. Here you are in your private space. So sometimes it can happen that somebody walks, somebody from your household, like a child, for example, walks into the room and are suddenly on camera and you didn't want that. So you need to make precautions that you are not exposing somebody who doesn't want to be on camera. Also, things from your private household might be visible. You might have a virtual background, but it might fail for a second or two. Um, you might share your screen and you reveal your bookmarks from your browser, a classic. Um, so be aware of that and take precautions, maybe practice a little bit. And in the end, the thir thir third point is super important for me. Better do recording and not live streaming. There might be exceptions 
where you really want to do live streaming and feel safe to do this, but usually recordings are the way to go. Um, again, some German has sneaked its way in here. Uh, live stream versus recording is the headline. So the live stream is not per se bad, but it has significant safety risks. If you publish your recording later, then you make your life safer and that of your participants. So what you can do is you record your game and then you give all the players a 24 hours or 48 hours rule of vetoing the publication. If they haven't agreed on publication before the game, then this time should be even longer and it should be opt in. That means you need the agreement of all players. Definitely, no exception. And obviously, if, nobody, if not everybody had agreed on recording, you can't record. So no secret recording. This is an absolute no-go. Uh, if you know record and you figure out that something didn't work as you wanted, then you can make the effort of cutting the parts out and still publish, or you just let it go and record something else another time. At least for me, this is still a hobby and something I enjoy. And in the end, if a, if a recording doesn't make it to YouTube, that's not the end of the world, quite the opposite. I don't mind that much. Although surely I like to have my recordings online, share them and see how also other people enjoy that, use them as an example uh, or get of how to play a game or are interested in, in playing the game and are now happy to see how it could work. Okay, we want more live action online games. I especially want more live action online games and there are more out there now than just from me. For a long time, it was just Tara Klepper and me Tara Klepper is another fantastic designer and community organizer from the Geek Initiative. She is um, US American based but plays with people from all over the world. And um, she's also doing actual plays um, but beside her, I was the only one for a long time. If you don't count the view screen videos and view screen was the very first log which existed and for, from that many actual plays actually existed already before. It inspired me, um, but that is a topic for maybe the discussion on the Discord after this recording. So if you have actual plays, please tell me. And if you don't, then what keeps you from making some? Um, do you want more support? Do you want to know more? Just let me know. What can I do to help you? My contact data is gerrit at alessestal.de. There is my Twitter on which I'm active and also um, ready to receive direct messages. And very importantly, there's a Facebook group. I'm also an, an admin of, which is the Remote Digital Lab and Live Action Online Games group. There you find links to actual plays. There you find uh, games you can sign up for. You find uh, theoretical discussions, uh, community discussions, place I can highly recommend. All right, thanks everybody. I finished nearly just in time. Uh, we're 49 minutes in. This was my talk about live action online game actual plays. Uh, thank you again, Conline, for inviting me. I hope everybody has a wonderful weekend and uh, see you over on the Discord. I'm joining the Discord now and I'm ready for any questions or discussions or comments. Um,